Hey, Billy Glisson with Power Core 360 talking about baseball power hitting, how to increase power. Today's subject is how to train hip rotational power. In other words, how do you train hip turn? Training the hips is a major power source. And so if you can teach an athlete to turn the hips with more strength and more power, more speed, the bat and the barrel is going to come through. So yeah, that's how you increase bat speed. You hit the ball further, harder, more consistently. It's a great solution. We're going to go through three drills today. We're going to talk about how to teach assisted hip turn, resistant hip turn, and overspeed. Let's get going. Using the bands and the harnesses allows the athlete to feel the movements of the hip and the hip turn with hitting. And the first piece we talk about is a teach piece. In other words, the athlete, we're teaching the athlete or they're learning how to do this. And then, of course, because they can feel it accelerates the learning process. In this case, I've got a PowerCore 360 hip harness on. Um, for my body size, I'm using an orange band, both for my size and one, so you can actually see where the band's at. I've got it hooked to my right hip and down to floor level. And in essence, it's out in front of me. And I'm going to go through and learn the feel for how do I actually turn my hips and hitting. First thing I'm going to do is we've talked about I'm going to step in, get my weight over the back hip, get set up, sit back into my hips, maybe even pop into back into my hips if you've watched that video. And now basically we're going to go through our load phase. We're going to go through stride and we're going to feel what it feels like for this band to pull the right back hip actually through. This is going to give the athlete the feel for how to turn their hips. Is the hips turning because the band is pulling the back side through? My belly button's actually turning through and I'm getting the feel for how to do that. I'm really not worried about right now talking and teaching and correcting the hands and the arm. I'm really starting from the ground up. We've talked to the athlete. We've taught them how to set up their feet, how to set up in the box, how to hop in and load their hips. And now we're working on that stride and we're working specifically on what's it feel like, since this is a teach piece, for my hips to actually turn through. Now the nice thing is I can put a T out here. I can do a stop bat drill, right, where I'm just really focused on starting to take this in, but I really am not focused on what the barrel's doing, the hand's doing, the upper body's doing. I want the athlete to feel what it's like for their hips to actually turn and to turn before their arms and chest and shoulders actually come through. The first part is truly a teach piece. It's slow, it's 10 reps. Um, it's very focused. We're not worried about hitting balls initially with this. We just want them to slowly go through the motions and feel what that's like, right? When we take the band off, the athlete should be able to go through the same motion and actually have the muscles around the hips activated so they can learn what it feels like to actually rotate the hips through. Here's the cool thing. It's not just a drill that we do with the band on and hope that it carries over into hitting. As soon as we're done doing it slow and being very focused, we can actually hit balls with this. We can keep the bands on, right? We can keep a light band on, we can put a tee out there, and that's what I suggest you start with. Even with an older athlete, I want them to load, I want the band to be on there, and I want them to actually go through and hit balls, feeling what it feels like for them to actually rotate their hips, swing the bat, and hit the ball. I'm not worried about the ball, and I'm not correcting all this other stuff once again. I'm just really focused on What's it feel like for them to actually move their hips and turn their hips, specifically in this case, and hit the ball? Okay, the second drill is now we're going from a teach piece, which is what the first drill was, to a training piece. So the athlete's been being pulled through. They feel what it's like to turn their hips. Now we take the band, and instead of having it on their right hip and pulling them through, I've got a band on my left hip, and so it's actually resisting my hip turn. I know what I want to do now. I'm going to set up in the box. I'm going to hop into my hips. I'm going to go through my load. I'm going to go through my stride. And I'm slowly just working on turning my back hip slowly and feeling what it feels like. Now, because I'm actually, this band is resisting the hip turn, it's actually a strengthening activity. So as I'm slowly going through this, I'm actually turning on more muscles. And really what's important is it's the specific muscles around the hips and pelvis that are required to actually turn the hips through. So I'm strengthening those muscles as at the same time that I'm actually working on building the muscle memory of the mechanics of that. So I'm getting a little more bang for my buck. Um, this is often, oftentimes slow uh, to begin with and we're just going through the slow motion. We're doing 10 reps of that. Here's what the cool thing is with our product, especially with hitting. 
as soon as we get done doing the slow, we maybe do our 10 reps. Now we can actually hit balls. So I can actually keep the band on. I can put a T out here, which is once again where we recommend. We can go into our hops. We can actually go through and have the athlete hit and work on going through full speed hitting motion. And at the end, we want them actually to hit, not really worried about where the ball goes, but what we're looking at is they're in position, right? Did they stride? Did they create their power line? Did the lower half go? Did the hips turn? And did their upper half stay back so we created our diagonal tilt, our power line going back? Most importantly, once again, we're working on just grooving. What does it feel like for our hips to turn and us to actually hit a ball, right? Now, the cool thing is, is they're doing this. Um, well, the cool thing is, is when the magic happens. When the band comes off, we can hit three or four or five balls off of a tee with the band on. And that's, once again, we're working on ingraining or grooving the muscle memory. We're getting stronger, but the athlete doesn't know it until they take the band off. When they take the band off, depending on how good they are feeling what their body's doing, oftentimes they'll just laugh because what will happen is their hips will start to turn. We've just turned on the muscles around the hips using the resistance of that band. We've turned on the muscles around the hips to turn the hips through quickly. So they'll feel that. Now we're still going to have them hit with the band off, put the ball up on the tee, have them hop in, have them take the cut, have them swing, go through the full swing motion they will start to like the feel of what's going on here because their hips are going to be turning fast. When their hips turn fast, the hips, when the pelvis turns, that's connected to the abdominal muscles, which connect to the rib cage. When the ribs turn, that turns the shoulders. And guess what? Arms are connected to the shoulders. And here comes everything through. The resisted hip turn drill is a strengthening drill. It'll work on power and speed. It's a wonderful drill. And the magic happens once again, especially when the band comes off. When the band comes off, they are hitting, they're hitting fast. Um, and like we said, band on, band off is just wonderful. It's a great way to teach them power. Okay, this last drill, we call it a hip overspeed drill. And the setup is very similar. In fact, it's the same as our first teach piece with a band hook to the right hip and across the belly and out in front of the body. But this time we're not doing slow drills. This time we're actually, we've already done our resisted drills where it was res resisting the hip turn and that kicked out a bunch of muscles. Now we're really advanced. And so we're putting a band on the right hip and we're gonna actually have the athlete go through and perform their motion of going and actually hitting balls off a tee. Their hips are gonna fly through because the band is now helping the hips turn faster than they can turn on their own. The end result will be their hips will turn faster than they can turn them on their own. When the hips turn faster, the chest and shoulders are going to come through faster. The arm, hands, and barrel are also going to come through faster. So back speed is going to come up. It is a great drill, but I also have to give you some warning. It's a drill for 15-year-olds and up. And it's not a drill even with 15-year-olds and up that you start on the first day of training. You don't just slap on a hip harness and start doing this. They probably need three or four weeks of base foundational training to where they know how to turn their hips, turn their chest and shoulders before we do the overspeed drill where we've got a band on here and the hips are going through. When you do this, you only go 5% faster than they can go on their own. So I've got a black band on my right hip. <clears throat> you wouldn't take an athlete who's training with maybe a black band or an orange band on their left hip doing the resisted and now put a red or an orange band on here. Their hips will turn so fast that they'll twerk their back. They don't have the control yet, the training experience yet to actually be able to go through turn their hips, turn their spine, and be able to control it. So we're going to start after three or four weeks of base level training for a 15-year-old and up, and we're going to start with just a light band, just enough for them to go 5% faster with the speed of their turn of their hips than they can go on their own. So it's not much, but believe it or not, that'll make a difference in their ability to actually turn their hips faster and create more bad speed. If you like this video, please like it down below. Consider subscribing to our channel. If you want more information about our equipment, our training, our products, go to PowerCore360.com.